a few months ago, I had a few friends who had a scare with bed bugs, and I made a video to kind of explain my experience with bed bugs and what I did to get rid of them. And since then, that video has mysteriously gone missing. I cannot find it anywhere online. I know it's on my computer, but um, it would take time to upload it from my computer. It's much, much easier from my iPad. So, since I had a friend, another friend messaged me today, and she's now dealing with bed bugs, I thought I would just reshoot the video, update it a little bit, and then I would be able to easily put it back online. My bed bug experience happened about a year and a half ago. It was around Christmas time. Um, we got the bed bugs. It took us months to realize that we actually had them because I had my bites were not typical bed bug bites. They were humongous, and I just thought they were mosquito bites. Um, so it took us a long time to realize that we had them. Once we had them, we had two fumigations before they were gone. Um, so it was just a kind of a huge ordeal. So let's just get started. So the first thing you should know is that bed bug bites don't have any kind of, they don't have any kind of poison, they don't have any kind of, they don't communicate diseases at all. So if you get bitten by a bed bug, it's probably just going to itch a little bit. Um, but you can't get sick from it or anything like that. Um, however, <laughs> there is kind of a mental and emotional roller coaster that you're going to go through that has nothing to do with the bites, but the bugs themselves. Just the fact that you have bed bugs and they're so hard to get rid of really takes a toll because it takes a lot of work to get everything um, packed up and fumigated and taken care of. And just the fact that they're really, really hard to get rid of kind of makes it feel like you have the black plague. I mean, that's what I felt like. Like, I didn't want anybody to come over and help me clean up or pack up because I didn't want them to get it. I didn't want to go and visit anyone. I didn't want to stay with someone for the time that I was dealing with it because I just didn't, I didn't want to sit on any furniture. I didn't want to go to class. I just didn't want to infect anyone with bed bugs just in case, and it made me feel like I had the black plague, like I couldn't leave my house. And so that kind of the mental and emotional roller coaster that you'll go through with bed bugs is not fun. But just know that if you do, if you follow all the steps and you do everything you're supposed to, it takes a while to get through with it, but once you're through with it, hopefully it will be done. And if you need to have a good cry, you can have a good cry. It, it helps. It always helps. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is the attitude that you should have um, when it comes to bed bugs. Now, if you're living in a house that's your house that you paid for, obviously there's not a whole lot you can do in terms of other people um, being obligated to help you. However, if you are in a renting situation or especially if you're in a dorm room on a campus, which is where I was at that time, um, you're in an agreement with whoever is letting you stay in the dorm, whether that be your landlord or the university, you're in some kind of agreement, you're paying to be in that house. And so there are stipulations, have the right to be taken care of if something happens. So what I really encourage you to do in most college situations, it's kind of a given, they're gonna take care of you if something like that happens, that just, I mean, they just have to. But if you're in a non-college, kind of renting situation in an apartment or a rent house, um, go ahead and read through your lease and see what it says on the subject of pest control. And um, really what that stipulates, what that contract stipulates, is going to dictate what your landlord can do for you. In the college setting, I would say ask for everything you possibly can, even be a little bit demanding, because when uh, colleges have to deal with a whole bunch of students, they're, they're probably going to gloss over things um, unless you specifically say this is what I want and I need you to do it right now. So that's the number one thing. Know, know what you can ask for and be ask for the maximum. Be as assertive as possible because they're not going to pay attention to you if you don't kind of assert yourself. And the more that you do that, the more that you take care of it, the more serious they're going to take you, and that just works out better for you in the end. Recognizing the bugs, um, when I first saw the first bed bug in my room, I thought it was a tick. It kind of looks like a tick, kind of like a, like a weird see-through tick. They're kind of like light-colored or almost clear-ish, 
but it's the same shape and they have kind of ridges on their back. And I, the first one I saw in my room, I thought I was a tick. I thought, oh, you know, this is Oklahoma, we have ticks all the time. Just didn't really think about it. I killed it, you know, got rid of it. But I didn't realize until later, the bug guy showed me this is a bed bug and I was like, I've been seeing those since August. I thought they were ticks. They look like ticks. So if you see anything that looks like a tick, um, kill it without smashing it if you can. Try to put it in something like a plastic baggie where you could keep it to show it to the pest control people because if they're able to look at that and say, yes, that's a bug. Keeping one of those, even though it's very disgusting, will really help in trying to decide whether or not you actually do have them. Now, when it comes to bites, um, as I said, my roommates and I had bites for several months before we realized what was going on, and that was because we didn't really have the typical bites. The things that I've read online is that typical bug bug bites move in a straight line, and the other thing is that they're very, very small. Um, and, I mean, the bugs are very small, so you would imagine that the bites would be very small, but um, my bites, I only got them on my arms, neck, and as horrible as it is, I think I got some on my face at one point, but I never got them on my torso, on my legs, anything. It was always on my arms and face, which makes sense because I sleep like this. So, I mean, they were all, they were by my headboard, they were around my pillow area, and with me sleeping like this, they were always on my arms, shoulders, and face. Not face, but neck, you know. Um, and so they were kind of localized, they were never in a line, and then the other thing was they were not tiny. They swelled up huge, and I might have just been allergic or something, but they were gigantic, and I, so I thought they were mosquito bites. And when I actually went to the student health clinic on campus, they told me that they were mosquito bites. So it was very misleading. Um, just know that you're, if you're getting any kind of bites and it's out of mosquito season, don't assume that they're not bed bug bites because they don't look tiny. But when it comes to getting rid of them, you have a few options. First of all, there's fumigation, which is a nightmare, but I highly suggest that you do it. And um, I'm not sure what pest control company your person is going to use, whether it's your landlord or your housing director, or if you're just doing it yourself, um, it could be any number of pest control companies, but you need to make sure that they use fumigation that uses not only chemicals, but heat. Because here's the, here's the bottom line when it comes to killing bed bugs. The thing that's going to kill them is a rapid extreme temperature flip. So when it goes, something goes from normal temperature to really, really hot, that'll kill them. Or if it's just kind of warm and then you pop it in the freezer, that will kill them. It just has to be a very rapid switch of temperature to kill them. Fumigating kind of does that. You put everything in plastic bags. Everything has to be airtight sealed. And then they go through with, with chemicals, yes, but with heat as well. And then when the heat is heating up your belongings, the bed bugs try to escape, and because they're in that airtight plastic, they can't escape, and so then the heat kills them. Now when it comes to clothes, you can't, they ask that you don't fumigate those, I think it's just because it's easier to wash them. You have to make sure that you wash them in hot water and dry them on hot. And if you have any clothes that you can't dry, like I don't dry most of my clothes I don't dry, um, so if you have anything like that, you can go ahead and wash it in hot, let it air dry, and then do the temperature flip thing. So put it in a black plastic bag and set it out in the sunshine to where it gets really, really warm, and then stick it in the freezer. So just anything where you've got that instant temperature flip. But yeah, wash your sheets. I'd even maybe wash your sheets twice in the hottest water possible and then dry it on the hottest setting. Anything that you can possibly wash, do that. And then, as I just mentioned, freezing things will help. Um, that's also really helpful with, like I said, books that you have. Like, when I was going through the whole ordeal, I still had homework, and so I couldn't leave my, my books and my notebooks in the apartment to wait three or four days to be fumigated while I had homework to do. So I took my homework books and just did the, the trash bag trick, set them in a black trash bag out in the sunshine for a while, pop it in the freezer, to get that instant temperature change, 
and that'll kill them. And then I also do that with like my purse, my backpack, things that can't be washed, but um, again, I immediately needed them. And uh, you can do the temperature freezing trick with pillows, with, um, with lots and lots of things. Now when it comes to electronics, um, I guess technically you might be able to freeze them. I never did that though because they really, bed bugs have to have a porous surface to be able to get into. Not just the bugs themselves, but their babies. It's gross and creepy. But um, that's why they can stay on anything that's wooden and books because it's kind of a porous surface. Whereas like your cell phone is very slick and it's not so much of an issue. Plus, I mean, if they got into your laptop, those generate so much heat anyway that they would be dead. So electronics, you don't have to worry about as much. So there's fumigating things, washing things, and freezing things. The number one tip I think I can give is when the whole ordeal is over, you need to get bed bug proof mattress covers for your box spring, for your mattress, and for any of your pillows. Um, if you're in a dorm situation, they will usually provide this for you, um, especially if you ask for it. If you're not, um, like when I moved out of the dorm and off campus, I bought my own and they're a little bit expensive, but it's a good investment because I haven't seen any bed bugs since. Um, and the cool thing that it does is it not only keeps bed bugs out, but if there are any left over in the mattress, it keeps them inside, which again, sounds really gross, but it keeps them away from their food and if they can't eat, they just die. So make sure you get bed bug proof mattress covers for all the pieces of your bed. And then finally, um, the biggest thing when it comes to not sharing them as you go to class and if you stay with someone else while the process is going on, the biggest thing is um, just to really plan things out so that nothing that you are wearing, nothing that you have touched, touches the uninfected place. So what I had to do was when I got there, like when I would drive to her house after being in my room, like after packing things up and I would drive to her house, I would go into the garage and change from my clothes into a robe or a towel or something and go straight for the shower because supposedly they can live in your hair. I never, I don't know if I believe that or if I ever experienced that happening, but um, it's better to be safe than sorry. So I just immediately changed into from the bed buggy stuff to something that was easily washed, head straight for the shower, and make sure that you literally wash everything off you. So you just have to kind of plan so that nothing that you touch will touch the new place that you're going to. Um, it just, and it really does, it comes down to planning. Any, you might have a certain outfit that you wear when you're in your bed bug infested place that you can um, say this is my my packing up outfit and then I'm just gonna leave that here. Um, I never really had problems with them transferring to my car. I think because your car gets so hot on the inside during the summer that heat will kill them. So that's really about it. I'm gonna try to get this edited and up as fast as I can so that I can share this with my friend and with anyone else who could possibly need it. I guess all that's left to say is good luck, and if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that, let me know in the comments and I'll try to address that.